Hey guys, today we're trying the Bard's Tale 4, as requested by Patreon subscriber Daniel A. Leahy. A summer's day ah. in Scarabri Became a wintry night Foes from below blood on the snow Bright crimson on white Ooh. A madman's story of ancient glory Brought death from far away I know I should have expected a bard. Power, dead mangar, scour, the depths of I wasn't quite ready for how quick it went from zero to bard. Snow in summer, in my head. Uh. None of us are going to die here. To the field of honor. I know the odds are against us. us. Oh dear. Not really. The nursery rhyme, tavern song, heroic ballad, and dead man's tale are like difficulty settings, I guess. Okay. I guess I'll do normal mode, if that makes sense? Yeah, I'm not really in permadeath mode no right now. In mood right now. They'll definitely uh, just take shit out. As designed, also sounds like the right thing. 80s style. Well met. Evil will not triumph. A pleasure to be traveling with you. For the streets of the world. Well met, friends. Okay, so 80s style turns off auto mapping and also makes you walk around on a grid. Whereas as designed makes you work around normally. Skip puzzles since you skip puzzles entirely. So I'll, I'll just I'll just I'll just do everything normal. We'll call this file or mole. Oh, there goes the bard. We have live action bards. The song I sing will tell the tale of a cold and wintry day, of castle walls and torch lit halls, and a price men had to pay. When evil fled and brave men bled, the dark one came to stay. Tell men of old for blood and gold. Had rescued a scarabre. I wonder if he actually knows how to play that instrument or not. Do you think they ever, since it's a bard game, do you think they ever just rewrite the fiction of their universe to just change the names of things to make them rhyme better? <laughs> like, they're like, damn, I, I, oh, this rhyme's not working. Fuck it. I'll just rename the town. Ha ha. <laughs> I have the power. Do you feel pity, friends, when you look upon these wretches? Well, wash it from your hearts. For these are the villains who seek to turn Scarabre into a pit of depravity. Elves, dwarves, trow, and practitioners of the dark arts. Enemies all, whose wicked lives must end if our city is to live in peace again. That's what you get, you heathen. Us. Children, shall the sword father smite all who befriend the old races? Well, that started rough. Drive the elf and the dwarf back to their wretched holes. Is it is a trow like a drow but green? <laughs> That's definitely what comes to mind for me. Let's see. Do 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 do. Not a big fan of the motion blur already. Sure, let's confirm those settings and uh, let's turn subtitles on. I guess they're already on, so uh, <coughs> the guy talking over there doesn't count as uh, subtitles right now. So if I set it to grid move, then I move around on a grid, I guess outside of combat. Whereas it sounds like I might switch to being on grid during combat. I, th I think this is, a, again, another dungeon crawler along the lines of like... Uh, Legend of Grimrock, for example, like just one of those games that has the the grid movement. Let's have texture limits. <laughs> Let's not just 
go crazy here. The game looked like it was having a little trouble. There we go. He shall cut out the tongues of the bards who sing of them. For the sword father knows it is the followers of the old ways who are killing the people of Scarabray, who are sacrificing us to their dark and bloody handed gods. The game definitely seems to be struggling less the moment I turned off the remove texture limits thing. Turn around. Streets closed. It's actually really pretty. I'm not entirely sure if those voices are coming out of those bodies, though. That was Gaelic singing, wasn't it? Oh, that's a bad business. And no mistake. I... I don't understand. What did they do? What was their crime? Their crime? Existing was their crime. The Fatherites don't like our kind. Come on, before those paladins give us a second glance. I'll give them a second glance. And maybe a... Oh, oh here now! Save it! You'll only get yourself killed. And we need you. You're gonna save Scarabray. <laughs> ah, you're looking at me like you think old Robbie's had a few too many. Well, maybe I have. But this is no drunkard's fancy. You've been in my dreams seven nights now, and each one with the same end. You the hero, and me lost. They all start with some evil slithering out of the darkness. And you driving it back from whence it came. But I don't make it to the happy ever after. And there's a moment right at the end where you could save me. And instead you choose not to. You just turn away and leave me to be buried alive. Well, maybe that means I shouldn't trust you. But you're the best hope we've got. So I guess I'll just have to pray that part's not true. Anyway, hero, let's get back to the Adventurer's Guild. I have a few words to say to the congregation. Unfortunate. <clears throat> that sounds like him explaining how he dies at the end of the tutorial, basically, or something. So, I guess the difficulty you pick also picks your character or something, and they're also all voiced, which is kind of impressive. That's neat. Rabbi, the leader of the Adventurers Guild, has temporarily joined your party. While in combat, Rabbi can attack with his axe and... Shillelagh? Oh yeah, it's a Shillelagh. Uh, as well as hand out health potions to his allies. This is Melody the Bard. She's your very first adventurer. You'll be able to replace her with a custom character shortly, if you like. She can attack with a hatchet, gain powers by drinking booze, and play Sanctuary Score to shield her allies. Okay, so you get a different character based on the difficulty you pick, I think. I think she's the person I saw on the screen. But you can basically just have anyone in the cast, so we kind of don't have a main character. Which feels weird. It's just an adventurer's guild that's doing stuff. So right-click brings this up. Okay. So, okay. Cuckoo. 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 And I think some of the stuff, like the, the lines and everything, might make a little more sense. Based on like the perspective you have if you're playing in grid mode, where you'd be moving like one grid at a time. Which probably happens during combat or something, but... You can't swing a cat in Scarabray these days without hitting a paladin. Not that I'm prone to swinging cats. Swing the cat. Embrace your destiny. Hey! What a load of shite. Always a few who will take advantage of hard times. Set up. I wasn't even remotely prepared for that barrel to just explode when I interacted with it. <laughs> Hot soup! Delicious soup! Best soup you'll ever have! I'm digging the, uh, the cultural background of this game. It's underrepresented. It's neat. Come here for soup, have you? 
Well, soup is not an adequate description for what you'll be getting. You'll be getting fulfillment, joy, the tender embrace of your mother's arms. This is not just soup. It is a revelation, a liquid epiphany. Heaven by the spoonful. There is no question that this soup is good enough for you. The question you have to ask yourself is, am I good enough for this soup? Hmm, uh... No. On consideration, you are not good enough for this soup. Oh. Okay. I mean, I feel judged. I feel like I have to follow the weird blood trail. Like, what could this be? Is there just a weird trail of blood? You are murder. I should... There's nothing to be gained fighting the Fatherite's head on. There's another way. At least, I hope there is. Scorn thou the adventurer! So these guys just suck. The elves, hero. They're pretty dedicated to this. Are they just killing everyone that's not human, basically? It's... This is like walking into the first major city. Is it Novigrad, I think, in Witcher 3? Like, oh cool, everything sucks here. And they're racist. In fact, that's part of why, that's basically why it sucks. <laughs> I dig how musical this game is. But not many. Adventurers say this time. Round them up. That's what I say. I've known elves, dwarves, and trow all my life. Finest people around. I'm, I'm digging this. Obviously, I should expect it to be musical because it's called The Bard's Tale. But, uh, like, that, the, the amount of the, the, just the sheer amount of music in the surroundings is really neat. Seems like they're hanging anyone. They hanged my shoemaker last week. He must have done something wrong. The temple knows what it's doing. Oh, no. That's a bad bias people have, that only some people are sort of getting over recently, but it's oh, constantly an issue, is if the authority figures do something, people reflexively just assume that it was for a good reason, and whoever suffered the consequences probably deserved it. Which is rough, when the people in power, you know, have all the power, and also get to write all the rules, and also get to decide whether or not you broke the rules even if you didn't, and so on. And they also control the narrative of what happens, and they tell the story. I just want to walk around and listen. Hi. Excuse me? Cabbage, uh, carrots, and uh, potatoes. Uh, are you okay? Cabbage, carrots, potatoes? Well, goodbye. Hi. Hi. Alright. Someone must have Here we are. The guild. Hello, Rebbe. A new recruit? There were more folk killed last night. Some great beast, they said. And again, they blame us for it. What I just saw at Henry's Hanging Tree was the last straw. We have to... D do you hear that? The Song of the Maiden. What does it foretell this time? Arrest the heretics! Burn this den of evil to the ground! This way, hero! Hurry! Well, I guess we're not gonna make... We're not gonna get friendly with that place in particular. Would you like to create a custom character or keep Melody the Bard as a starting character? Uh... I mean, I'm happy to keep Melody, but I also feel like I should preview this so you guys can at least see what it is. If 
we're going to use Melody that briefly, why don't we just make a character regardless? We used her for like 10 minutes. <laughs> and, that, and that was me taking my time a bit. <laughs> All right. Gonna go Guitar Hero, huh? Bard. Practitioner. Fighter. And a rogue. Vanish. She's so she's so sneaky. She's hiding behind the archetype screen. <laughs> Part of me definitely is like, but isn't the bards the points of the whole thing? Bards use spell points to tell stories so grand they carry mystical properties along with them, imbuing the listener with the essence of song. Bards provide powerful buffs and debuffs to the party, though can be a serviceable combatant in a pinch. Bards gain their power through good humor and a wet whistle, meaning they gain spell powers, spell points, and bonuses from drinking on the job. Everything else is probably relatively straightforward. Spellcaster, tanky melee guy, and then a rogue. Chop Chug Sanctuary Score. A protective song that shields allies from harm. Drink magical booze to fuel your magical songs. Watch out though, if you get too drunk, you'll gain a, a brief boost of strength before passing out in a drunken stupor. Oh boy. Culture. So what do you got here? Bad human, I know, human. Thicty human. Outlander human. Dwarf. That's a dwarf, okay. Elf. Trow, those are trow. They look neat. Like an interesting, like, alien variant sort of thing. The head, the head shape has things going on. Uh, ever the opportunist, the Trow's party gains one opportunity when they land a killing blow. This may happen only once per turn. What's opportunity, though? It sounds good, but I don't know what it is. Short, scrappy, and mischievous, Trow are both loved and feared by the people of Kaith. The old tales say a Trow around the house is good luck, and some people leave out food for them. The, fa the father riots say they are dirty thieves who will sicken babies in their cribs. Really, they're just ordinary folk, trying to get along the best they can, which sometimes means taking advantage of human generosity. Sure. Watch out, or I'll hurt you. I'll hurt you, alright. You are making me very, very tired. You change the portrait and the voice changes with it. If you make me fight, I'll kill you. And the and the default name. This isn't my first fight, you know. If you don't go away, I shall be quite cross. You've got to pay for what you've done. Innocent male. You don't scare one home, you niblet. When all this is over, I'm pulling your teeth out of my boot heels. <laughs> all right, the voice acting's fun. Run along now, or I shall have to spank you. <laughs> <laughs> Iron pants. Why not? Uh, if I ever play this game, I'm probably not going to keep this Let's Try as part one anyway. So let's just be a little haphazard here. Welcome to your skill tree. Each time you level up, you earn a skill point. There's a bunch of tabs. Music. Hot cross buns. Plus two maximum spell points, plus three intelligence. Do I already have that one? Stance. Any enemy who strikes you or the protected allies at your side with melee strikes take two physical damage and is set on fire! Wow. That's a bit of a problem. It's a spell point to adventurers. Get some intelligence. Reduce enemy strength. Reduce the cooldowns of my entire party. That sounds nice. And max spell points. This one sounds nice. Let's grab that one. Ah, and as I spend points, this thing like stretches outward. Is that the same between trees? Looks like it. No strength. Hit somebody twice. Ooh. Ooh. 
So this one, this one's a directional attack from the front. This one just hits the entire this line, but it hits the first person in that line, I guess. Yeah, there's a little grid that tells you how the attack works, ish. Critical hits, hits with sword abilities have a 20% chance to reset their cooldowns, and axes and bludgeons. Hmm. Probably should. I feel like I should get the mental stat. That'll complement my ability to use. Uh, I'll probably increase my intelligence. I figure. Which, for for that matter, intelligence is probably a decent starting point. This is a very interesting looking skill tree. You have four parallel skill trees where you can buy anything, and then once you collectively get enough points in the first tier across all of your trees, you unlock the next one. I think is what's implied here, and it's really visual and dynamic looking. It's like it's neato. Hello, Iron Pants. Run along now, or I shall have to spank you. <laughs> uh, finish isn't working. Finish? Finish there. Yeah. You barred or believe it is the achievement I just unlocked. Of course. I think they might not be showing their heights accurately on that screen. Because when I switched between them, they looked like they were the exact same height, and I was a, a tad confused. You have a character that can use spell points. When in combat, magic spells and bardic songs cost spell points to activate instead of opportunity points. Ah, so non-spells use opportunity points. So then having, my, having kills generate opportunity points would be good. So that seems like me being this class is good. This kid, this race is good. Spell points can be generated in combat by using abilities like Chug or Meditate. So you drink to get your magic. Practitioners also passively generate spell points each turn. But I'm not a practitioner. Spell abilities are easy to spot because of the spell point icons on them. Well, now we're down here and I'm magically a completely different species, so... Have it a normal one. We made it. What a nightmare, eh? Come on. We've got to get to the old guild and figure a way to protect ourselves. I'm really unclear on what the benefit was of having me not be a custom character at the beginning. The Adventurer's Guild from back before the old town was buried is still here after all these years. Just a little filthy and liable to collapse. At least it's well hidden. No danger of another visit from the Fatherheads. Come on. We're looking for a green door. Look at this absolutely beautiful environment. Like, this is nice. This is just a great aesthetic. Like there's a generic fantasy aspect of it, but like there's specific there's something specific about how it's rendered. It it vaguely reminds me of like Trine? The way that those games are so beautiful. Father Right notices an edicts. Do not enter. By order of the temple, this property is condemned. Disease, corruption, or abominations may be found within. Do not enter. I hate barrels. You'd better there. Now you're safe. No matter what befalls, you'll come right back to here. Now I've saved. There's my portrait, which you could switch out and all that. It's higher resolution here than when I was picking it, I think. So it kind of would have been. Oh god, they blink. That's the only part of them that's animated is that they blink. That, that's a choice. <laughs> It looks here like some kind of acid, like, burned out the wall a bit. It's trippy. Blue Highway. I just want to find a fight so I can get a feel for what that's like, because we actually still haven't found one. But this feels like a dungeony kind of place where that would happen. And they just had me save, which all the more feels like a fight might happen. Oh, look. Adventurers! Hello! Wait a moment. Don't think these are any friends of ours. 
No, they're up to mischief. We'll have to fight them, I fear. Look out, an enemy. Charge enemies before they spot you to get the first strike. If they spot you first, they'll get the first turn. How do I charge them? Ooh, stuff. First strike. I guess you just run into them. Okay. Hello. Uh, combat and Bard's Tale is turn-based. You have three opportunity points to spend each turn. The number will increase as you progress. Your adventurers have abilities that cost opportunity to achieve. The only way to recover opportunity after it is spent is to end your turn. Or be a... Uh, what is it called? A trow. Because trows generate opportunity when things die. For their whole team, apparently, which seems incredibly powerful. Maybe everyone else had cool, powerful abilities, too? So they have six health. I have nine. He has twelve. I think he's also a bard. Ready, uh, they, I suppose. So they have a facing away uh, portrait and a facing the screen. On your ward. One, and he's very bardy too. It looks like. Hang on, here. Uh, what are we doing? On your ward. <laughs> uh, am I supposed to be doing something? This game has some personality. Give an allied combatant a shield with four constitution for one turn. But I need to be drunk too. Oh, for this another effect? The allied combatant will be healed for two if the shield is broken. Is that if I have drunk two or do I need drunk two to do it? No, I need spells to do it, but I don't have any spell points. <laughs> the, the talking mad shit. Dude, you're gonna die when I do this. This has reduced all of your cooldowns across your whole party, but I need, I need spell power, so I need to drink. I need to be very drunk. Chug. Free. Gain spell points by drinking a magical booze and from your inventory. Chugging also grants drunk status effect. Dwarven Stout, 1. Trow's Squeezins, 12. Oh, I need to, like, collect alcohol as, as a resource. That's interesting. I can also move around on a grid. Oh. That makes sense. Like, my attacks have a range that they move in. Like, I, I guess these are all squares I can actually be in. So I can... So I can rearrange them outside of combat, probably, to have a starting position that I like more, if there is one. Let's drink. Oh, each one has different stats. So Trow squeezes two spell points and one stack of drunk. Two spell points and two stacks of drunk. Your next melee attack gains knockback. Ooh. Let's do that. Getting drunk. Each time your bard takes a drink, they get a little drunk. If the drunkenness level exceeds their intelligence, they'll have a brief burst of strength before they pass out and are stunned for one turn. All this can be seen is if you inspect the drunk stats effect. Drink responsibly. It's based on your intelligence stat. So I'm too drunk right now, in that I have, I have two drunk points. Not I'm not too drunk. My intelligence is five, so we, that's what we need to keep in mind. Interesting. Let's try this barrier ability. On me, I guess, because I'm the one that's that's easiest to kill. Sanctuary heal. There we go. And now let's uh, fuck some dudes up, as it were. Deal three physical damage to the first enemy in range. Does that hit it? Is that gonna hit both of them? Now you pick a column to attack. Gotcha. And I have one more point, right? So he's just screwed. Goodbye. Bye bye. He, he gave it a go. Oh yeah, I, oh. Dang. So that did give me another effort point. So I guess I should have gone with this guy. F oh! My bad. It looks like uh, opportunity points are shared across your party. Yes. Ready. Okay, because they weren't replenished when we switched. This mo does more damage than you have health. Well, there we go. Kill for the masters. What masters are 
Gained Cutthroat Dragon's Bile Bomb. What the heck? What does that mean? Here's my inventory. So he's a level 3 bard who's temporarily in my party. I'm a level 1 bard. Put a little helmet on. Boop. Nope. I'm not, not a leather armor user, so useless. Apparently. How's my health? Does it replenish? 20 constitution. Wow. Alright, I didn't take a damage, I don't think, so there's no health to regenerate. Damn. Dramatic. Well, that's a lot more of them this time. Well, that's way more of them this time. Combat takes place on a 4x4 grid. When your party is standing on one with your, with your party standing on one side and the enemy standing on the other, movement in combat is critical. When enemy uh, which enemy an adventure hits depends entirely on where they stand on the battlefield and the targeting pattern of the ability they're using. That's why I noticed this. I had one ability that could target any row on my main character and one that only shot forward. So I could only hit the guy directly in front of me. So they're in like an L shape right now. Hmm. Not they're not hyper durable people. <clears throat> this guy does some serious damage. Delete. There we go. And I guess. And I should probably do a drink. I can defend myself a little bit. And then get hacking. But mine are less effective than his are. Ah. Coming through. So they hacked away a bit, me a bit, but they only took out my bonus health, I believe. So the the, the, the spell I just cast it defended me for the entire turn, the and it did so effectively. So uh. It's too bad for you, I guess. Ooh, Head Knocker has a cooldown. Oh, you only have five health. Bye bye. Bye bye. Ready. Yes. Can chop you. And that reduces. Yep. Trout's advantage gives me one extra ability point. So I could keep going if I could just get some cooldowns back. Not that they're exactly gonna die. Let's try that ability cooldown resetter. <laughs> She's making it sounds like she doesn't like it. Still, this only does four damage, which is not ideal. But your head knocker is only a straight line ability. Can I move to your space and like switch with you? <gasps> I can! You're fucked. You can switch with somebody. That's great news. That was a nasty scrap. Let's see to our wounds. You've taken some damage. Heal up for your next fight. No, I haven't. <laughs> you fool. You, <laughs> you fool. You thought that was a I have to take fight a damage fight, but you are wrong. Ha ha. Hoo hoo. Hoo hoo. Everybody point and laugh. Hoo hoo. <laughs> this, this is promising. This game seems neat. I dare say this might be a fun time. It's got like it's some charm to the writing and whatnot. Hatchet, main hand, strength plus one, strength plus two. Bard fighter rogue. So, oop, better weapon, just like that, right? Is this oh pages and pages of inventory. Be afraid. 
yeah. Pretty all right. This game looks good. It sounds good. It, it, the writing seems all right. I don't know about like the storytelling or anything like that because we haven't gotten very far. But like the combination of how it's written and the voice acting pr pulling it off makes it like entertaining so far. Just to, just the style of how you listen to it and all that. I am interested. Uh, if you'd like to check out Bard's Tale 4, there's a link in the description to the Steam page. Thank you to the developer for sending me a code so I could preview their game. Thanks for watching like always guys, and I'll see you next time.